again. Thank you to Fall City Arts. Please enjoy Green Stages 12th night. Almost. <laughs> The appetite may sicken and so die. Th that strain again. It had a dying fall. It came o'er my ears like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets stealing and giving odor. Enough! No more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. O spirit of love, how quick and fresh thou art, that notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea, not enters there of what validity and pitch soever, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. Ah, how full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? Ugh, what, Curio? The heart. Why, so I do. The noblest that I have. Oh, when I first did see Olivia, me thought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires like fell, and cruel hounds have ever since pursued me. How now? What news of her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaid do receive this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face of ample view, but like a cloister, she will veil and walk and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she hath a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother? How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, when liver, brain, heart, ah, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled her sweet perfections with one self, king, ow! Oh, away before me to sweet bed of flowers, love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers, ha <laughs> ha! What country, friends, is this? This is Illyria, lady! What should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium? Perchance he is not drowned? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself, after our ship did split, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself to a strong mast that lived upon the sea. I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. You're saying so, but there's gold. Knowest thou this country? Ay, madam, well, for I was bred and born not three hours from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature as in name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino. I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And is so now, or was so very late, for uh, but a month ago I went from hence, and then twas fresh in murmur, as you know what great ones do, the less will prattle of, <laughs> that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. But what's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count who died some twelve months since, leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, uh, for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the sight and company of men. Oh, that I served that lady. Mm, that were hard to compass, as she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the Duke's. <laughs> There's a fair behavior in thee, Captain. <laughs> I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shall present me as a eunuch to him. 
Oh, it may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that may prove me very worth his service. What else may hap? The time I will commit, only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see. I thank thee. <laughs> Lead me on. What a plague means my niece. Take the death of her brother thus. <laughs> I'm sure care is an enemy to life. By my trust, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier nights. <laughs> Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. Why let her accept? Before accepted. Aye, <laughs> but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, so be these boots too. Maybe not. Let them hang themselves in their own straps. <laughs> Quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Oh, Sir Andrew Eichencheek? Aye, he. He's as tall a man as any's in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? Only has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Why that you say so? He plays the viol the gamboy. And speaks three or four languages, word for word, without book, and, uh, of all the good gifts of nature. Aye, that he hath indeed, almost natural, for besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler. And but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarreling, tis thought among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand, they're scoundrels and substractors that say so. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking health to my niece. Oh, I'll drink to her health. As long as there's a passage in my throat and drink in Lyria. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brains turn to the toe like a parish top. <laughs> oh, wench, Castiliano Vogo, for here comes Sir Andrew. Thank you, Fees! <laughs> Sir Andrew, Sir Andrew. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. You know, what's that? My niece's chambermaid. Oh, a good mistress, a cost. Uh, I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress, Mary, a cost. You mistake. Knight, a cost is front her, board her, woo her, a sailor. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? <laughs> Fare you well, gentlemen. Now that it parts so, Sir Andrew, thou mightst never draw a sword again. And you part so, mistress, I would I might never draw a sword again. <laughs> Uh, fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Oh, sir, I have not you by the hand. Oh, Mary, right. that you shall have, and here's my hand. <laughs> oh, sir, I thought she's free. I pray you bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. What for, sweetheart? What's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. <laughs> Why, I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry, but... What's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Hi, sir, I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now I let go your hand. I am Baron! Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, night! That lacks a cup of canary. <sighs> Where did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. You think sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has? But I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. When I thought that, I'd forswear it. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? Well, what is pourquoi? Do or not do? I would have episode that time in the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. Then hadst thou an excellent head of hair. My hair? But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Oh, excellent. Hangs like flax on a distaff. Then I hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. Faith! <laughs> I'll hope tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. Or if she be, it's four to one. She'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by. Oh, Ooh, she'll sir. none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither by estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear it. 
Todd, there's life in me. <laughs> I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels, sometimes all together. Are thou good at these kickshaws this night? As any man in Illyria whatsoever, he be under the degree of my betters, and yet I will not compare with an old man. Oh, what is thy excellence in a galliard knife? Faith, I can cut a caper. Oh, and I can cut the mutton to it. And I think I have the back prick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore have these gifts a curtain before them? Or is there not go to church in a galliard and come home in a Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> My very walk should be a jig. I would not so much as make water, but in a sink of pace. Is this a world to hide virtues in? So we set about some revels. What shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus, that's sides and heart? No, sir. It's legs and thighs. Let me see the caper. <laughs> Higher! <laughs> Excellent! If the Duke continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He has known you only three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence, that you call in question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No, believe me. I thank you. Here comes the Count. Who's saw Cesario? Ho! On your attendance, my lord. Uh, here. Uh, Stand to your wild duke. Cesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have enclassed thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Stand at her gate, but not denied access, and tell her, there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she never will admit to me. Well, be clamorous, and leap all uncivil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, unfold to her the passion of my love. <laughs> Surprise her with your discourse of my faith. It will suit thee better to act my woe. She will attend it better in thy youth, and Nuncio's more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it, for they shall yet belie thy happy ears that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth than Rubius, and thy pipe is as the maiden's organ shrill and sound, and, and all else is semblative of a woman's part. I know thy consolation is right apt for this affair. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. <laughs> Yet a barful strife, whoe'er I woo, myself would be his wife. Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no colors. Uh, make that good. He shall see none to fear. Ugh, a good Lenten answer. Well, God give them wisdom that have it. And those that are fools, let them use their talents. No, yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away is not that as good as a hanging to Many you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. And as for turning away, let summer bear it out. You are resolute, then. Not so neither, but I am resolved on two points. Uh, that if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your Gaskins fall. Apt, if faith. <laughs> Very apt. Well, go thy ways. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh oh, as any Nalaria. Oh, peace, you broke. No more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely. You were best. Now wit and be thy will put me into good fooling. Those wits that think they have thee do off prove fools, and I, that I'm sure I lack thee, may pass for a wise man. For what says Quinopolis? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. <laughs> God bless thee, lady. Ugh, take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take away the lady. Oh, go to. You're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna. The drink and good counsel will amend. Or give the dry fool drink, then is the fool no longer dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. All that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin. Sin that amends is but patched with virtue. As there is no true cuckold but calamity, so beauty is a flower. The lady bade take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. <sighs> Miss Prisian, in the highest degree, Lady Cucullus non facet monocum. Which is as much to say as I wear not motley in my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. <laughs> Make your proof. I must catechize you for it, Madonna. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, 
I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournst thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul's in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn your brother's soul being in heaven. <laughs> Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> what think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. The infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity, the better for increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for twopence that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day by an ordinary fool with no more brain than a stone. <laughs> Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. <laughs> I protest, I take these wise men that crow so at this set kind of fool no better than the fool's zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and of free disposition is to take these things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now, Mercury, and do thee with leasing, for thou speakst well of fools. Madam, there is a young gentleman at the gate much desires to speak with you. Ugh, from the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man, and well attended. Who of my people holds him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Uh, fetch him off, I pray you. He speak nothing but madman. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio, if it be a suit from the Count, I am sick, or not at home, what you will to dismiss it. <clears throat> now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Thou spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool. His skull Jove crammed with brains, for here he comes, one of thy kin as a most weak pia mater. Uh, by mine honor, half drunk. <laughs> what is he at the gate, cousin? Uh, Jim. A, a gentleman? What? What? Gentleman? I uh, just a gentleman here. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Sorry. Why can I pick up Harry? Ooh. Hey, I'm now sock. Good sir, Toby. Cousin, cousin, how came you so early by this lethargy? Lethargy? I defy lethargy. Oh, so, uh, there's one of the days. Hey, Mary, what is he? Let me down when will, I cannot. Hey, <laughs> say I. Well, <clears throat> it's all one. <laughs> What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a madman, a fool, and a drowned man. One drink above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Well, go thou and seek the crowner and let him sit, oh my cuz, for he is in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. <laughs> go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the mad. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to be aware of that, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that, too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He is fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak to me. Has been told so, and he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Uh, mankind? What manner of man? A very ill manner. <clears throat> he'll speak with you, will you or no? What personage and years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy, as a squash is before tis a peas cart, or a codling when tis almost an apple. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favored and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call him my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman! My lady calls! <clears throat> Give me my veil. Come, throw a door in my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. <laughs> the Honorable Lady of the House. Which is she? Uh, speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will. Most 
radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable oh. beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for, besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Oh. <laughs> Beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. <laughs> Good, gentle one. Give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? <laughs> <laughs> my profound heart, and yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain if you are she, you do usurp yourself. Uh -oh. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. Uh -oh. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Yes, we took great pains to study it and tis poetical. Ooh. Well, tis the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. <laughs> I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. Mm. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? <laughs> there lies your way. No, good swabber, I am to hold here a little longer. I... modification for you, giant. Oh, sweet lady, tell me your mind. I am a messenger. I'm sure you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. <laughs> Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. Oh. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. Mm. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me. Have I learned from my entertainment? Uh, what I am, what I would are as secret as maidenhead. <laughs> to your ears, divinity, to any others, profanation. <laughs> Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. <laughs> hmm. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady, a comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method, in the first of his heart. Oh, oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? Ah, you are now out of your text, but we will draw the curtain and... Show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is not well done. Excellently done. If God did all. Tis in grain, <laughs> sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blunt, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive, if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. No, I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty, which shall be inventoried in every particle and utensil labeled to my will as item to lips in different red, item two gray eyes with lids to them, item one chin, one neck, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you, what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master, Loves you of such love as could be but recompensed, though you were crowned the non pirel of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Oh, yet I suppose him virtuous. Oh, I know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, and in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension, and the shape of nature, a gracious person, and yet <laughs> I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, 
and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contaminated love and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Hello your name to the reverberant hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. Um, what is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, oh, chance, you come again? Uh, uh, to tell me how he takes it. Ah, very well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love makes his heart of flint that you shall love, then let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell. Fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Oh. <laughs> Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, limbs, action, and spirit do give thee fivefold blaze in it. Oh, that's a fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the master were the man. Oh no, even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this use perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eye. Well, let it be. <laughs> ah, what ho, Malvolio? Yeah, madam, at your service. Uh, Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or not. Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord or build him up with hopes I am not for him. If that the youth would come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do, I know not what, and fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force, ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Will you stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. But let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No! Sooth, sir, my determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. By perceiving you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I'm willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in good manners to express myself. You must know me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, whom I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister both born within an hour. Had the heavens been pleased when we had so ended, but you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. The lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. And though I could not with such estimable wonder over far believe that, yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She's drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance of more. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him who you have recovered, desire it not. Farewell. I am bound for the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else I would very shortly see thee there. But come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Were you not now, even with the 
Countess Olivia. Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have since arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. <laughs> you might have saved me my pains to have taken away yourself. <laughs> she adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. Uh. <laughs> and one thing more that you never be so hardy to come again in his affairs unless it be to report his taking of this. <laughs> Receive it, sir. She took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you previously threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. I... If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, it is who finds it. <laughs> I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outsides have not charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed. So much that sure me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts, distractedly. She loves me. Sure of the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring white. He sent her none. I am the man. If it be so, as tis, poor lady, well, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fadge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now. Alas, the day what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe. Oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Approach the letter. Not to be there at the midnight, is to be up the time. Thou knowest. Nay, by my troth, I know not, but I know to be up late is to be up late. False conclusion. I hate it. I do not feel tan. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed to times. That's not our life consists of the four elements. <laughs> Faith, so they say. But I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Oh. <laughs> Thou art a sour. <laughs> Let us therefore eat and drink. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm here. Hey, there he is. Here comes the fool of fame. And now my heart. Oh, welcome, man. Hey, the third guy. the fool has an excellent breast. I had rather than 40 shillings, I had such a whole leg, and so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. In sooth, thou was in very gracious fooling last night, when thou spoke of pickle grommetus, of the vapians passing the equinoxial, t'was very good of faith. I sent thee sixpence for thy leman. Hast it? I did impeticus thy gratility, for Malvolio's nose is no whip stuff. My lady has a white hand, and the Myrmidons are no bottle <laughs> ale out. Excellent! Why, this is the best fooling when all is done. Now, a uh, song! Yeah, come on! Let's have a song! Hey, there's a sixpence for you. <laughs> there's a tester of me, too, of one night given chip. <laughs> yeah. Would you have a love song or a song of good life? Oh, love song! Love song? Yeah. Yeah. Aye, aye, I can offer good wife. <laughs> Mistress mine, where are you roaming? Staying here, your true love's coming. Staying here, your true love's coming. That can sing, oh, I am alone. Truth. 
trip no further, pretty sweetie. Journeys end in lovers meeting, every white man's son who doth know. And what is love? It is not hereafter. Present mirth and present laughter. Present mirth and present laughter. What's the know is still unsure. And today the lies know plenty. Then come. Kiss me, sweet and twenty, use a stone. Well, not, not endure, use a stone. Will not endure. I'm gonna lift noise, boys, as I am true knight. Oh, and a confusion. Very sweet and contagious. Yeah, and to hear it by the nose, it is dulcet and contagion. <laughs> but shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Yeah. Huh? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch? Yeah. Yes. So we'll draw three souls from one weaver, huh? Shall we do that? Can you let me let Stewie and I am dog in a catch? By a lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. <laughs> let her catch be thou knave. Oh, hold thy peace, thou knave knight. I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. <laughs> this is not the first time I've constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool. It begins. Hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> Good, if I come, begin. <laughs> Hold thy peace, and I prithee hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave. Thou knave, prithee hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, and I prithee thy peace, thou knave. Thou knave, thou knave, hold thy peace, thou knave. Thou knave, Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a Catean. We are politicians. Malvolio's a pagan, Ramsey, and three merry men be we. <laughs> Am I not consanguineous? Yep. Am I not of her blood? Oh, Tilly Valley. <laughs> lady. There dwelt a man in Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. There dwelt a man in Babylon. Lady, lady, lady. Shrew me, the knight's an admirable fooling. Fine. He does well enough, if he be disposed. So do I, too. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. On the twelfth day of December, my true love gave to me Ten lords are leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids are milking, seven swords are swimming, six geese are laying, five stories! Oh, are you mad or what are you? Have ye no more wit, manners, nor honesty but to gabble like tinkers at this time of the night? Do ye make an alehouse out of my lady's house that you squeak out your cozy sketches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect of persons, place, no time in you? We didn't keep time, sir, in our catches. <laughs> Snick up. <laughs> sir, Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. My good Sir Toby. His eyes do show, his days are almost done. It's even so. But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much Shall I bid him go? And if you do, shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you dare not. Oh, 
Out of tune, sir. You lie. Hard any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, that there shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, by St. Anna, ginger shall be hot in the mouth, too. Thou art of the right. Go, sir. Rub your chain with your crumbs. A <laughs> stupid wine, Mariah. Mistress Mary. If you value my lady's favor anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know. Oh, she by shall his hand. Who oh, by this hand? Oh, crow, shake your ears. T'was good indeed as to drink when man's are hungry, to challenge him the field, and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Do a knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Now, the sweet Sir Toby be patient for tonight. Since the use of the counts was today with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a neighbor and make him a common recreation, do not think enough. I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us, tell us something of him. Mary, sir, he is sometimes a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. What, for being a Puritan? The exquisite reason, dear knight? I I have no exquisite reason for it, but, but I have reason, good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly, but a time pleaser, an affectioned ass, the best persuaded of himself to so crammed as he thinks with loyalties that it is his grounds of faith that all that look upon him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he will find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hand. Excellent! I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> he shall think, by the letters that thou wilt drop, that they come from my niece, and that she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. Oh. And your horse now would make him an ass! Oh, ass <laughs> oh it will be admirable! Oh, sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. For this night, to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Good night, Penthesilia. Before me. She's a good wench. She's a beagle, true bread, <laughs> and one that adores me. <laughs> what of that? I was adored once, too. <laughs> it's the bad night. Thou must need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Well, send for money, knight. Thou hast not at the end. Call me cut. If I do not, ever trust me. Take it how you will. Well, come, come. I'll go burn some more sack. It's too late to go to bed now. Come night. Come on night. <laughs> Give me some music. Oh, good morrow, friends. Good Cesario, a piece of song. Now the time passes over more pleasant and gay since we've learned a new song to drive songs. Sorrows away, sorrows away, sorrows away, sorrows away. Since we've learned a new song to drive sorrows away. That was very good, but I meant that old and antique song we had last night. Uh, Methought it did relieve my passions much, more than these bright airs and recollected terms of these more brisk and giddy-paced times. Come. He, he is not here, so please, my lord, that should sing it. Who was it then? Festy the jester, a fool the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Let's seek him out and play the tune the while. Come in, the boy. Now, if ever thou shalt love in the sweet pangs of it, remember me, for such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish, and all motions else save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. 
I also like this tune. It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye has strayed upon some fortune that it loves, has it not? <laughs> a little, by your favor. Oh, what kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. <laughs> She's not worth thee. <laughs> what years in faith? About uh, your years, my oh, lord. Too old by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wear she to him, so sway she level in her husband's heart. For boy, how we do praise ourselves. Our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more wavering, longing, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or else thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. So they are, alas, that they are so to die even when they to perfection grow. <laughs> uh, ah, and now, good fellow, that piece of song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain. It is silly sooth and dallies in the, in the innocence of love like the old age. Huh? Are you ready, sir? Aye, pretty sing. <laughs> Sir, I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. <laughs> Give me leave to be leave. Now the melancholy God protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind's a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea, that their business might be everything and their intent everywhere. For this uh, that always makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. Yeah. Let all the rest give place. Now, once more, Cesario, get thee on to seem sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands, the gifts that fortune hath bestowed upon her. But tell her I hold as giddily as fortune, but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir... I cannot be so answered! But you must huh? say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? No woman's sides could bear the beating so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. <laughs> they lack retention. Oh. Alas, their love may be called appetite. There's no motion of the liver but the palate that suffers surfeit, cloyment, and revolt. Make no compare between the love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. <laughs> what dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of art as we. <laughs> My father had a daughter, loved a man, as it might be perhaps for I a woman I should your lordship. What's her history? A blank. My lord, she never told her love, but let concealment like a worm in the bud feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought. And with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. 
Is not this love? Indeed, we men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than our will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died your sister for her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Uh, I, uh, that's the theme, to her in haste. Give to her this jewel, say. <laughs> Give to her this jewel, say, my love can give no place. By no time. Come the way, Saint Fabian! Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with a melancholy. <laughs> well, so not be glad to have this rascally sheep biter come to some notable shame. I would exult, man. You know he brought me out a favor with my lady about a bear baiting here. What? I know. Well, to anger him, we'll have the bear again. And then we'll fool him black and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we not do Andrew? And we do not enjoy well, any of our lives. <laughs> Here comes the little villain. How now, my medal of India? Malvolio is coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun practicing behaviors to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close in the name of jesting, lie thou there. For here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. <laughs> Tis but fortune. All is fortune. For I once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus dear, saying, should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? Oh, here's an overweening rogue. Peace, contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets under his advanced plume. Slight, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be count? Malvolio! Oh, no! Pistol him! Pistol him! His peace! There is example for it. The Lady Vestracci married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fire on him, Jezebel! Peace! Now is he deeply in? See how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her city in my state. Oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye! Calling forth my officers with my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I've left Olivia. Sleeping. Ah, fire, brimstone. Oh, please, please. And then to have the humor of state, and and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman Toby. Bows and shackles. Peace, peace, peace. Now, now. Seven of my people with an obedient start make out for him. I frown the while, gents wind up my watch or play with my. Some rich jewel. <laughs> Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? Well, let's be drawn from us with cars. Yet peace. I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. Yeah, shall Toby not take you a blow of the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes, having cast me on your niece, give me this regard, a what? surrogative of speech. What? You must amend your drunkenness. Shout! Scam! Patience, we break the sentence of our plot! <laughs> Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knife. Well, that's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew? Yeah, I knew twas I, for many to call me fool. <laughs> What employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gin? By my life. This be my lady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's, and her T's. And thus makes she her great P's. <laughs> it is in contempt of question her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's? Why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes, her very phrases, by your leave, wax <clears throat> soft, and the impression her crease with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady, to whom should this be? This wins him, liver and all. <laughs> <clears throat> Jove knows I love, but who? <clears throat> Lips do not move. No man must know. 
No man must know what follows. The number's altered. No man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio, Mary hang thee, Brock. I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knife with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore, M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A <laughs> fustian riddle. Excellent, wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, hey, but first let me see, let me see, let me <laughs> see. The poison hath she dressed him. I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me. I serve her. She is my lady. This is evident to any formal capacity. There's no obstruction here. And then the end. What should I they, they make of that alphabetical position? Now, if I could make that resemble something in me. Softly. Uh, M O A I. Oh, I make up that. He's now at the cold scent. M. Malvolio. M. Why, that begins my name. Did not I say he'd work it out? The cur is excellent at faults. M. <laughs> but then there is no consonancy in the sequel. That suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. Ah, you're all cudgel him and make him cry. Oh. Yeah. And then I comes behind. I and you had an I behind you. You might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. M O A I. Uh, this simulation is not as the former, and yet to trust this a little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters are in my name. <laughs> so, he follows prose. Mm. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars, I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands. Let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to endure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast not thy humble sluts and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Put thy tongue into the tang of politic talking. Uh, uh, let allow herself to be the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stock, stock, stockings, and wish to see thee ever cross guarded. I say, remember. Go to. Thou art made if thou desires to be so. If not, let me see thee as steward still, the fellow of servants, and unworthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the fortunate, unhappy. <laughs> Daylight and champagne <laughs> discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point to vice the very men. I do not now fool myself till an imagination jade me for every reason excites to this, that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stocking to wait. She did praise my leg being cross guarded, and in this she manifests herself to my love with a kind of injunction that drives me to these habits of her liking. <laughs> I thank my stars. I am happy. <laughs> I will be strange, stout in yellow stockings and cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting on Joe that my stars be praised. <laughs> Thou canst not choose, but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smile becomes thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile. Dear, my sweet, I pray thee. Job, I thank thee. I will smile. <laughs> <laughs>
I will do everything that thou shalt have me. My father will be smart for a pension of thousands to be paid from the selfie. I could marry the wedge for this device. So could I. Here it comes, my noble gold catcher. Well, thou put thy foot on my neck. Or on mine, either. <laughs> Shall I become thy bond slave? <laughs> faith, or I, either. Why, thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Hey, but say true, does it work upon him? My <laughs> cock will be to do a midwife. <laughs> if you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark his first approach before my lady, he will come to her in yellow stockings. Oh. <laughs> disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that he cannot but turn him into a notable contender. <laughs> if you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. <laughs> I'll make one too. Guitar. No, sir, I live by the church. Art thou a church man? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house to stand by the church. Oh, so thou mayest say, oh, the king lies by a beggar if a beggar dwell near him, or the church stands by thy guitar if thy guitar stand by the church. You have said, sir, to see this age, a sentence is but a chevral glove to a good wit, how quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Nay, that's certain. They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would therefore my sister had no name, sir. Why, man? Why, sir, her name's a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister want one. But indeed, <laughs> were, sir, words have grown very rascals since bonds disgraced them. By reason, man? True, sir, I can heal you none without words, and words have grown so false I am loath to prove reason with them. I warrant thou art a merry fellow, and carest for nothing. Not so, sir. I do care for something, sir. But in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, I would it would make you invisible. Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No, sir, the Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool till she be married. And fools are like, fools are as to husbands as pilchards like to herring. The husband's the bigger. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Count Orsino's. Foolery, sir, doth walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, that the fool should be as often with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, thou pass upon me, I'll no more with thee. Uh, hold, there's expenses for thee. Now, if Jove in his next commodity of hair send thee a beard. By <laughs> my troth, I'll tell thee I am almost sick for one, though I would not have it grow on my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bred, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia, sir, to bring a crescent into this Troilus. I understand you, sir. Tis well begged. The matter, I hope, sir, is not great. Begging but a beggar. Cressida was a beggar. My lady is within, sir. I will construe to them whence you come. Who you are and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. <laughs> this fellow is wise enough to play the fool. And to do that well craves a kind of wit. Oh, he must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons and the time, and like the haggard, check at every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice as full of labor as a wise man's art, for folly that he wisely shows is fit, but wise men folly fallen quite taint their wit. <laughs> Uh, Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. Dieu vous garde, monsieur. Et loisez votre serviteur. Uh, I, I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. Uh, will you come to the house? My niece is desirous you should enter. I am bound to your niece, sir. Ooh. 
I mean, she is the list of my voyage. Well, taste your legs, sir. Put them in motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean, to go, sir. Uh, to enter. I will answer you with gate and entrance. But we are prevented. <laughs> Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. That use of rare courtier, rain odors, well. My matter hath no voice, lady, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors? Pregnant and vouchsafed? I'll, I'll get them all three already. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Odors? Your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your <clears throat> servant's name, fair princess. <laughs> My servant, sir. <laughs> Does never marry world since lowly fading was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino, you. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your, your servant's servant is your servant, now, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on... His behalf. <laughs> By your leave, I pray you, oh, I bade you never speak of him again. <laughs> but would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady, <laughs> don't give me leave. Beseech you, I, I did send after the last enchantment. You did hear a ring in chase of you. <laughs> so did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. <sighs> Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in a shameful cunning that you knew none of yours. What might you think? <laughs> Had you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tyrannous hearts can think <laughs> <laughs> to one of your receiving? Enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hideth my heart. So, <clears throat> let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not a grise, for it is a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Oh, then methinks it is time to smile again. Oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. Yeah, the clock, the clock. Upbraids me <laughs> with the waste of time. Oh, be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. Oh, there lies your way. Do west. And westward, ho! Oh! Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Stay. I prithee, tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I am not what I am. I would you were, as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. <laughs> a murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything I love thee, so that Mogger, all thy pride, nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo thou therefore hast no cause, but rather oh, reason thus with the reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought better. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has. Nor ever none shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so, good madam, adieu. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou may, mayest perhaps move that heart which now abhors to like his love. 
Ugh. <laughs> no! Faith, I'll stay a job longer! My reason, dear Venom, give thy reason! I must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew! Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Well, did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you! Yeah, I, well, <laughs> Slight, will you make an ass of me? She did show favor to the youth in your sight only to exasperate you, to awaken your dormouse valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her, and with some excellent jests fire new from the mint, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was balked. The double jilt of this opportunity you let time wash off, and you are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard. <laughs> Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt of either valor or uh, policy. Well, I, I mean, anyway, it must be with valor for policy, I hate. Why then, build me thy fortunes on the basis of valor. Challenge me, the Count's youth, to fight with him. Heard him in eleven places. Thy niece shall take note of this, and assure thyself, there is no love broker in the world can prevail more in man's commendation with women than the report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. <laughs> It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. Oh, oh. And if thou voust him some thrice, it shall not go amiss. Oh, Come, about it. it. Uh, uh, let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen. Oh, no matter about it. <laughs> We'll have a rare letter from him, but, but you'll not deliver it. Oh, never trust me then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. As for Andrew, if he were opened, and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, <laughs> I'll lead the rest of the anatomy. It's opposite. The youth bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the youngest wren of nine. <laughs> <laughs> if you desire the spleen and will laugh yourself into stitches, follow me. Yon Gulma Foley always turned Jesus! Oh, no! Oh, oh, he did yellow stuffing! Uh, Most villainously, <laughs> like a pedant that keeps a school in the church, I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter. He does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of his <laughs> I would not by my will have troubled you. Yeah, you. <laughs> but since you make pleasure of your pains, I'll no longer chide you. I cannot stay behind you. My desire more sharp than spiled steel did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, though as much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage, but jealousy one might befall your travels, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often seem rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I could no other answer make, but thanks. <laughs> and thanks. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Uh, tomorrow, sir. Best first see your lodging. I am not weary. It is long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the things of fame and the memorials that do renown this city. Uh, would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a fight against the Count, his galleys I did some service. Of such note indeed that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. But like you slew a great number of his people? Eh, the, uh, the offense is not of such a bloody nature. Albeit the quality of the time and quarrel may well have given us bloody argument, which if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not walk too open, then. Yeah, it doth not fit me. Uh, hold, sir. Here is my purse. 
that the south suburbs at the Elephant is best to lodge. Why, I your purse. Mm, happily your eye shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase, and your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. Um, <laughs> be your purse bearer and leave you for one hour. To the Elephant, elephant I do remember. Excuse me. I have sent after him. <laughs> he says he'll come. How shall I feast him? You know, what bestow on him? Ha, <laughs> for you, he has bought more often oh, begged or borrowed. Ah, you speak too loud. <sighs> Where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortune, but... Where's Malvolio? Uh, he's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? Oh, no, madam. He does nothing but smile. Ooh. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he come for sure. The man's tainted in his wits. Go. Oh, call him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. <laughs> Uh, what ho, Malvolio! Sweet lady, ho, ho! Uh, smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad, lady? I could be sad. This does make for some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering. <laughs> well, that, if it please the eye of one, it is with me, as the very true son it is. Please one, and please all. How dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? <laughs> Not black in my mind, though yellow in my leg. <laughs> it did come to his hands and commands shall be executed. I think we do know that sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? <laughs> to bed. <coughs> to, mm, to bed. I, sweetheart. And I will come to thee. Oh, God, comfort thee. Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so often? So how do you, Malvolio? At your request. Yes, nightingales and to dogs. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well writ. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Like some are born great, some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings? Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see thee ever cross garters. Cross garters, stop. Go to, thou art made, if thou desires to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Oh, madam. <laughs> The young gentleman who encounters us, he knows, is returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He awaits your ladyship's pleasure. I will come to him. <laughs> Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where is my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh, 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 do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to come look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to this in the letter. Be cast off the humble sloth, says she. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Uh, let thy tongue tang arguments of state put thyself into the trick of singularity. <laughs> I have limed her. <laughs> uh, but it says Joe's doing, and Joe make me think. And when she went away just now, let this fellow be looked to. Not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. Why, this all concurs that not no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. Why, what can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Joe. Not I is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Which way is he in the name of sanctity? If all the devils of hell be drawn in little, and Legion himself possessed him, yet I'll speak to him. Here he is! Here he is! I wish with you, sir! I wish with you, ma'am! Go off! Ah! Ah! I discard you! Let me to my private! Go off! Ah, and you speak ill of how hollow the fiend speaks within him! But did I not tell you, sweet Sir Toby? Oh, my lady prays you to have a care of him! What was that, mistress? Oh, oh, go to, go to, peace, peace! 
We must deal gently with him. Let me alone. How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? <laughs> what man? Defy the devil! Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Pray God you not be he went. Carry his water to the wise woman. Aye, and it shall be done tomorrow morning, if I live. <gasps> My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. What was that? <laughs> this is not the way. Do you not see? You move him. <gasps> Let me alone with him. No way but gentleness. Gently! Gently! The pain is rough and will not be roughly used! Okay, sorry. How <laughs> oh, now, my barcock? How dost thou? Check, 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 Oh, you are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall no more hereafter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible? If this were played upon a stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. Yeah, why <laughs> and think of the affection of the device man! Yeah, pursue him, lest the device take air and take! Why, we will make him mad indeed! Oh, the house will be the quieter! <laughs> Let us have him in a dark room and bow! Oh. <laughs> My niece is already of the belief that he's mad! We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance, till our very pastime Tired and out of breath, prompts us to have mercy on him. Uh, At the which time, we'll take the device to the bar and crown thee the finder of madmen. <laughs> but see, but see! Oh, more matter for a May morning! <laughs> Here's no challenge, read it! I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it! It's so saucy! Why is it I warrant? Yeah. Do Give it me! Read! <clears throat> Ew! Whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not? Nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Exceedingly brief and to exceeding good sense. Less. <laughs> I will waylay thee going home, and if it be thy chance to kill me, good. thou killest me like a rogue in a village. Still you keep on the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and may God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself. My friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Aguecheek. <laughs> well, if this move him not, his legs cannot. <laughs> I'll give it him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady, oh. and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew, scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey, as soon as thou seest him draw. And as thou draw, swear horribly. Nay, let me alone for swearing, thou bellows earth. <laughs> now will not I deliver this letter, or his letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. You'll find it comes from a clodpole. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Aguecheek a notable report of valor. This will drive the gentleman as I know his youth is apt to receive it, into a hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. <laughs> this will so fright them both that they'll kill one another by the look, like cockatrices. <laughs> oh, here he comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave, then presently after him. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for the town. <laughs> 
I have said too much and to a heart of stone and laid mine honor to uncherry out. There is something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. But the same haveview that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. It is my picture. No, I'll refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. <laughs> <laughs> I beseech you, come again tomorrow. Yeah. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny that honor saved may upon asking give? Only this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that which I have given to you? I will uh, bequit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare you well. <laughs> A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen! Oh! Oh, God save you! <laughs> and you, sir! Let the defense thou hast! Take thee to it! Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not! But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at orchard end! Dismount thy tuck, the yar in preparation! For thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly! You, you mistake! Sir, I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. Well, my remembrance is very free and clear from any image of offense done to any man. Well, you will find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, but take you to your guard, uh, for thy opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish a man with all. I pray you, uh, <clears throat> sir, uh, what is he? Oh, he's a knight, dubbed with unhatched rape here and on carpet considerations, but he's a devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced, free, and his incessant at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. Yeah. Hobnob is his word. Gift. Or taint. I will return again into the house oh! and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men who put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valor. Belike this is a man of that quirk. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sir, no. His indignation derives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. So strip your sword, start naked, for metal you must, this that's certain. Uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the knight what my offense is to him. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. <sighs> I will do so. Saint Fabian, stand you by this gentleman to my return. <sighs> Pray you, sir. Do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. What manner of man is he? He is indeed, sir, the most fatal, bloody, and skillful opposite you possibly could have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I, I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that had rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my metal. Why, man, he's the very devil! I have not seen such a fear ago. I had a pass with him, rapiered, scabbard and all. He gave me the stuck with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. And on the answer, ho, 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 he pays you as surely as your feet hit the ground they step on. They say he's been the fencer to the Sophie. Wax on it, I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he'll not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Wax on it, and I thought he had been valiant and cunning in fence. I'd have seen him day under and have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse, Grey Capulet. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Stand here, wife. Make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> I have his horse to take up the quarrel. <laughs> I persuaded him to use the very devil. He is as horribly conceited of him and pants and looks pale as if a bear were at his heel. <laughs> <laughs> There's no remedy, sir. He will fight you for his own sake. Therefore, draw, given the supports of his vow. Uh, he protests he will not hurt you. <laughs> 
Oh, pray God, defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. And Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot by the dwell avoid it. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not harm you. Come on, toot. Pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you, it is against my will. Suit! Oh. <laughs> I'm good. Fight! <laughs> <laughs> Put up your sword! If this young gentleman offend, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. You, sir? Why? What are you? One, sir, that for his love dares yet do more than you have heard heaven brag to you, he will. Nay, then, if you be the undertaker, I am for you. <laughs> no, nothing, Mike. <laughs> oh, oh, bless you! Oh, Dr. Toby, hold! Here comes an officer! I'll be with you anon. Hey, you, sir! I'll put your sword up, if you please. Very will I, sir. And uh, for that I promised you, I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily and reigns well. Antonio! <laughs> I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. <laughs> no, sir, no jot. I know your favor well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. He knows I know him well. I must obey. There is no remedy. I will answer it. This comes with seeking you. What will you do now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse? You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir. Away! I must entreat you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness you have showed me here. And part being prompted by your present trouble, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold, there's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Is it possible my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not taunt my misery, lest it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, sir, nor know I you by face or any feature. I hate ingratitude more in a man than lying, vainness, babbling drunkenness, or any taint of vice whose strong corruption inhibits our... Oh, fate. heavens themselves! Cups, I pray you go! Let me speak a little! This youth you see here has snatched one half out of the jaws of death! What's that to me? The time goes by away! Well, but oh, how vile and idle proves this god! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature shame! In nature there's no blemish but the mind! None can be called deformed but the unkind! Virtue is beauty, but the beauteous evil are empty trunks, overflourished by the devil! Man grows mad! Away with him! Come! Come, sir! Ugh. Leave me on. His words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I prove true imagination. Oh, prove true that I, dear brother, be now ta'en for you. Come here, the knight. Come here, the Fabian. What? We'll whisper over a couplet or two of most sage soul. He named Sebastian. I, my brother, know both living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was my brother, for he went suited in this color ornament. Oh, if it prove tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love. That's a very dishonest and paltry boy. More coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying it. A coward, a most devout coward, religious in it. Slid out after him again and beat him. Do knock him soundly, yeah. but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Shall we see the events? <laughs> I dare lay any money, it will be nothing yet.
Will you make me believe I am not sent for you? Go to! Go to, thou art a foolish fellow. I pray you let me be clear of thee. Well held out to faith. No, I do not know you. Nor am I sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. No, your name is not Master Cesario. Nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent my folly? He has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. <laughs> I prithee, ungird thy strangeness and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? Ah! I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me! No, here is money for you. Money! If you tarry longer, I will give you worse payment. By my truth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report after 14 years' purchase. Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you! <laughs> Why? There's for thee! Ah! Yeah. And there! Ah. And there! Ah. Are all the people mad? This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats. Oh. Too bad. Okay. Come on, sir! Oh. Hey, let him alone! I'll go another way to work with him! I'll have an action of battery against him! If there be any law in Illyria! No, I struck him first. Yeah, yeah, there's no battle for that. Oh. Let go of thy hand! Come on, sir! I will not let you go! Come on, my own brother, no put on my Well, you are well fleshed. Come on! I will be free of thee! Well, what's thou now? Huh? If thou dost dare set me further, draw your sword. Nay, then. I must have that malapert blood from you. and hath botched up that thou oh, oh, may smile at this. No, thou shalt not choose, but go. Do not deny. <laughs> oh, be shrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. Oh. What relish is this? How runs a stream? Come on. I am mad or else this is a dream. <laughs> Let fancy still my sense and lethe steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. <laughs> Nay, come, I, I prithee. Would thou wouldst be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh. <laughs> Say so, and so be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nope. Believe that one sir, toughest the curate. <laughs> Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the whilst. Well, I'll put it on, and I'll dissemble myself in it. And it would have were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. The competitors enter. Joe, bless thee, Master Parson. Bono, dear Sir Toby, for as the old hermit of Prague that never saw pen and ink very wittily said to a niece of King Gorbaduck, that that is, is, so that I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. <laughs> well, for what is that but that, and is but is? <laughs> to him, Sir Topaz. What well, I say? Peace in this prison. Oh, that name counterfeits well. That's a good name. Who calls that, huh? 
Sir Topaz the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio the lunatic. Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, good Sir Topaz, go to my lady. Out, hyperbolical fiend, how vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Well said, Master Parson. Sir Topaz, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topaz, do not think I'm mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Oh, why, thou dishonest Satan? I call thee by the most modest terms, for I'm one of those gentle ones that will use the devil himself with courtesy. <laughs> Saying thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topaz. Why, it hath bay windows, as transparent as barricados, and the clear stories running south-north are as lustrous as ebony. Yet complainest thou of obstruction? I am not mad, Sir Topaz, and I say to you this house is dark. Madman, thou errest. <laughs> I say there is no darkness but ignorance. Oh, hallelujah. I say that this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell, and I say to you that never was man thus abused. Make, I, I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? That the soul of our grandam might happily inhabit a bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul, and in no way approve his opinion. Fare thee well, remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I will allow thy wits, and fear to kill a woodcock, lest thou dispossess the soul of thy granddam. Fare thee well. My is going to win this, Damn, for all waters. <laughs> oh, tell him in thy own voice. Bring me word on how thou finds him. I would, we were well rid of this knavery. I am now so far in offense with my niece, I cannot pursue any safety with this sport to the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Oh! My lady is unkind to me. Oh, that's why she's so oh, I say. She oh. Who calls, huh? Oh, good fool. As ever I shall do well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? I, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? The good fool. I, I never was man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits as thou art. But as well? Then you are mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. Oh, they have here propertied me, keep me in darkness, send ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise you what you say, the minister is here. Oh. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain bibble oh. babble. Sir Topaz! Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Oh. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God be with oh. you, good Sir Topaz. Marry, amen. <laughs> I will, sir. I will. Oh. Oh, I say. Alas, sir, be patient. What? What say you, sir? I'm shemped for speaking to you. Good fool. Help me to some light and paper. I tell you, I am as well as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am. Oh, good fool. Some ink, paper, and light, and convey which I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of that I did. I will help you to it, but tell me true. Are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. I will fetch you light, paper, and ink. I will requite it in the highest degree. I pray thee, be gone. I am gone, sir, and an answer. I'll be with you again. Like a thrice in the old vice, your lead to sustain. Who with a dagger of laugh in his rage and his wrath cries ah to the devil like a mad lad pare thy nails dad and you good man devil this is the air and that is the glorious sun <laughs> this pearl she gave me I do feel it and see it, and though it is wonder that it wraps me thus, it is not madness. 
Oh, where's Antonio then? I, I could not find him at the elephant. Yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. Oh, his counsel now might do me golden service, for though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness. Yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I, I'm ready to distress mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust, but that I am mad. <laughs> or else the lady's mad. Or else the lady's mad. <laughs> yet, yet, yet or so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs in their dispatch with such smooth and discreet and stable bearing, as I perceive she does. <laughs> there is something in it that is deceivable. Yet here the lady comes. Yeah, play not this haste of mine. If you mean well, now go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. We are there before him, and underneath that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. <laughs> well, he shall conceal it. Uh -huh. Whilst you are willing, it shall come to note. Uh -huh. What time we will, our celebration keep according to my birth. Well, what do you say? Uh -huh. Yep, yeah, according to the birth. So, with uh, you, just do the. <laughs> 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 I, I will follow you and go with this good man. <laughs> and, um, having sworn truth, Ever will be true. <coughs> ah, lead the way, good father. And heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. <coughs> <coughs> no, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. I do not desire to see this letter. <laughs> Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends. Aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. Oh, no, good fellow, I know thee well. How dost thou? <laughs> Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Uh, just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can this be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly that I am an ass, so that by my foes I gain in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that... Conclusions to be as kisses. If your four negatives make your two affirmatives, why then, the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. Why, this is excellent. <laughs> Brametro, sir, no. Though it please you to be one of my friends. Oh, that shall be no worse for me. There's gold. But that would be double dealing, sir. I would you could make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. I'll be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. A primo, secundo, tertio is a good play. And the old saying is, the third pays for all. You can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you tell your lady I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awaken my bounty further. Mary, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. <laughs> I go, sir, but I would not have you think that my desire of having is the sin of covetousness. But, as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will awake it anon. <laughs> Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. His face I do remember well, but when last I saw it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. What's the matter? Orsino! This is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraud from candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private brabble, did I apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what was, but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies? Whom in terms so bloody and so dear has made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir. Be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio was never yet thief or pirate. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ingrateful boy there by your side, from the rude sea's rough and foamy mouth, did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love without retention or restraint. For his sake, pure for his love, did I expose myself to the danger of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, where his false cunning taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, Denied me mine own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. And for three months prior, no interim, not a minute. Both day and night did we keep company. 
Here comes the Countess! Now heaven walks the earth! But as for thee, fellow fellow, thy words are madness. Three months of this youth attended upon thee, but more that anon, take him aside. <laughs> what would my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam? Gracious Olivia! What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. Nothing, my lord would speak. My duty hushes me. <sighs> if it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel? Still so constant, lord. What, to perverseness? <laughs> You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithless offerings hath breathed out the devotion ever tendered. What shall I do? Be it what it please, my lord, that shall be coming. Why should I not, had I the heart to do it, like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love? Since you do non regard this cast my faith, and since I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, leave you the marble-breasted tyrant still, but this, your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him like tear out that fell and cruel eye, why well, since crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me, my thoughts are ripe with mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I most joking, apt, and willingly to do you rest, a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love, more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than e'er I shall love wife. I, me detested, how am I beguiled? <laughs> Does beguile you? <laughs> Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Cesario, come. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband. Stay. The husband? My husband. Can he that deny? Her husband's wrong. Oh, no, my lord, not I. Alas, it is oh. the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. No, fear not, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be what thou know thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearst. Oh, welcome, Father. <laughs> father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, <laughs> confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your rings, and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony. Since when? My watch hath told me, toward my grave, I have traveled but two hours. <laughs> o thou dissembling cub, what will thou be when time is so a grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, and take her, but direct thy feet, where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do I... not swear, O oh, little faith, though thou hast too much fear. <laughs> For the love of God, a surgeon, send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? Has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. For the love of God, your help. I'd rather than 40 pounds that we're all home. Who have done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario. Uh, Lord's lifelings. Here he is! You, you broke my head for nothing, and not that I did. I was sent on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never heard you! What? You drew your sword upon me, but I bespake you fair and hurt you not! If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me! <laughs> I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb! Here comes Sir Toby, halting. We <laughs> shall hear more. Oh. But if he had not been a drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did! How now, gentlemen, how is it? That's all one has hurt me, and there's an end on it. Sought, did see Dick's surgeon sought. Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour are gone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. And he's a rogue. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. What? I am sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I would have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a stranger guard upon me, and by that I perceive that I have offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, for the vows we made each other but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective that is and is not. <laughs> oh, Antonio! Oh, my dear Antonio! 
how the hours have racked and tortured me since I have lost thee. Sebastian, are you? Here is thou that, Antonio. How have you, how have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. <laughs> Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. <laughs> Do I stand there? I, I never had a brother, nor can there be that deity of my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister, whom the blind ways and surges have devoured. I pray you, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. Were you a woman? As the rest goes even, I would let my tears fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, John Viola. My father had a mole upon, upon his, his brow, brow, as had mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen, 13 years. years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He did indeed end his more life that day that made my sister thirteen years. If nothing lets to make us happy both, but this, my masculine usurped attire, and do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do go here and jump that I am by a love. <laughs> Which, to confirm, I'll bring thee to a captain in this town where lie my maiden weeds, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this lord. Lady, you have been mistook. <laughs> <laughs> Though nature and her bias true in that, you would have been contracted to a maid. Nor are you therein by my life deceived. You were both contracted to a maid and a man. Be not amazed, right noble is his blood. This be so as yet the glass seem true, I shall have some share of this happy wreck. <laughs> oh boy, that was said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. <laughs> and all those things will I overswear. <laughs> Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now endurance at Malvolio's suit, a gentleman and follower of my lady's. You shall enlarge him. Uh, fetch Malvolio hither. Good, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract. Uh, most extracting frenzy of mine own from my remembrance hath clearly banished his. Oh, how does he, Sarah? Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub at the stave's end, as well as a man in his case may do. Has here writ you a letter. I should have given it to you today morning. But as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. N open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <laughs> By the Lord, yes, madam! Now, art thou mad? No, madam, I do but read madness. And your ladyship will have it as it ought to be. You must allow Vox. You prithee. <laughs> Read in thy right wits. So I do, Madonna, but to read his right wits is to read thus. Therefore, perpend, my princess, and give ear. Yeah! Read it you, Sirrah. Ahem, <laughs> <laughs> by the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. <laughs> Though you have put me in darkness, and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses, as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter, which induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right, or... Uh, or you much shame. Uh, uh, think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury, the madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. This savor's not much distraction. Oh, see him delivered, Fabian. Uh, yeah, bring him hither. Ah, uh, my lord. <laughs> These things further thought on, so please you to think me as well a sister as a wife. One day she'll crown the alliance on it, so please you here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you in four years. Okay. <laughs> your master quits you. <laughs> and for your service done him so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding. And since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. From this moment, you shall be your master's mistress. A sister. You are she. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the madman? Aye, my lord, this same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you, peruse this letter. 
You must not now deny that is your hand. Write from it, if you can, in hand or phrase, or say it is not your seal, nor your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then. Tell me, why, in the modesty of honor, you've given me such clear lights of faith. Bid me come smiling and cross guarded to you. Made me, made me wear yellow stockings and to frown on Sir Toby in the light of people and acting this in an obedient hope. Why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the no most notorious dick and go the air invented painter? Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character, but out of question tis Mariah's hand. Now I do bethink me it was she first told me thou wast mad, then camest in smiling and in such forms which here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Uh, good madam, hear me speak, and, and let no quarrel nor no brawl to come taint the conditions of this present hour, which I have wondered at. <laughs> in hopes it shall not, most freely I confess, Myself and Toby set this device against <gasps> Mavolio here upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Mariah writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance in recompense whereof he had married her. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malice it was followed may rather pluck on laughter <laughs> than revenge if the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Why, some are born great, <laughs> some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude. One, sir, two pass, sir. But that's all one. <laughs> By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you not remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not, he's gagged. And so the whirligig of time brings in his revenge. <laughs> I'll be revenged of the whole pack of you! He has been most notoriously abused. Pursue him. What? Yeah, you. You treat him to a piece. <laughs> Cesario, come. But while you are a man, so you shall be. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. <laughs> when I was in a little tiny boy, oh, the wind and rain. A foolish thing was but a toy for the rain and rain of every day. But when I came to man's estate, hey, oh, the, the wind and rain. rain. Knaves and thieves, men shut their gate For the rain it raineth every day Ooh, the wind and rain Ooh, the wind and rain